And welcome back to This Week. Time now to get the views of our media and political experts, Democratic strategist and vice president of MMA Creative, Mike Kopp, and her daily on 1510 WLAC syndicated talk show host, Steve Gill. Welcome, gentlemen. Nice to see you. We saw earlier in the, in the setup piece the president's plan for jobs and improving the economy is going before Senate members piecemeal. Well, the first piece got killed today, $35 million, billion dollars, would have roughly expanding jobs for firefighters, teachers, and the like. Republicans didn't like it. Now, Mitch McConnell has said there is some room for common ground. I guess the question is, what part is he looking at that maybe there is agreement on? Well, I think, first of all, you've got a lot of Democrats that are not in agreement with doing this deal. You had three Democrats vote against even bringing this up for a vote, and there were others that said they would vote against it if it came up for a direct vote. So while the Republicans are getting the blame for it, the bottom line is this was a bipartisan defeat for the president. And I think the bigger issue is why is the federal government paying for local police officers and local teachers? These are issues that if there's anything in America ought to be funded locally, uh, it should be here rather than us sending a dollar to Washington and maybe get 30 cents back here in our local community. So that's one of those issues I don't think they're going to be able to overcome. I think it's politically they need to move forward on something. The fact is the reason why they're doing this is because the local governments don't have the revenue they did before and people are out of work and they're not able to fund you know, essential services like police and fire like, like we expect. Federal government's got to step in and take a role. It just has to. Will there be something to come out of this jobs plan, some kind of agreement in some area? Oh, I think there has to be. I mean, I think politically, it's it's uh, it's it's really hard going in election cycle without anything. Well, without anything, first of all, and, and, and for and both parties, for both parties, and also to be voting against what could be a vote against firefighters and police and teachers. Not a good thing to do politically. Well, I think also you're looking, the Republicans in the House have passed bill after bill after bill that Harry Reid and the Democrats in the Senate aren't allowing to come up for a vote. So the bills that are coming out of the House should get more attention, should get the opportunity for a vote in the Senate, and that's going to provide uh, the kinds of job creation that I think most folks could agree on. The reason Harry D Reid doesn't want to bring those up for a vote in the Senate is because they would pass, and they're not the Obama plan. The big story of the week, obviously, the capture and then killing of uh, Muammar Gaddafi. NATO has now ended its mission there. U.S. involvement with that mission, about $2 billion, aircraft, no, uh, drones, no boots on the ground, as it were. Does this justify the mission? Well, I think it's, it's a good result that you've gotten rid of a bad guy. But the problem is there's other bad guys out there. Are we now going to go into Syria and take out Assad? We've put 100 ground troops into Uganda for no apparent reason that the American people could understand. And I think the bigger issue as we move ahead is what happens next in Libya. We've seen what the Arab Spring in Egypt has produced. Uh, you've seen Coptic Christians being murdered by, by the droves, and there's not any focus on that. And you're seeing that become yet another uh, Sharia-compliant Muslim extremist country. And I think, unfortunately, the same thing's going to happen in Libya. I think the president did exactly what he needed to do. I mean, the, this whole situation with Gaddafi goes back to President Reagan. Mm -hmm. When Reagan was trying to figure out a way to take him out, president after president has tried to deal with Gaddafi. It was important for this regime to end. Uh, the president said he would do it without putting boots on the ground, and he did it, and I think it's a huge success for the president. Other than an embassy, which will eventually take place again, will the U.S. have any role in a post-Qaddafi Libya? Well, we need to have a role there because there are about 20,000 shoulder-fired missiles that are missing. There's all sorts of armament and weapons that are missing as well. We need to make sure who gets their hands on those because we were backing terrorist rebels, the same kind of folks connected to Hamas, al-Qaeda, and others that we're opposing in Iraq and Afghanistan. We were on their side in Libya, and we'll see how that plays out. I think the Secretary of State Hillary Clinton has, has been wise to, to align herself with this prime minister right. who's trying to b put together democracy. Um, and that's an important thing right now moving forward. The U.S. has a stake in this militarily, strategically, with the oil reserves there. And, it, again, it's a success for the president. He needs to bank on that. Another big story on Friday, the president basically declared the war in Iraq over and said that most U.S. troops, if not all, will be home by the end of the year. For several years now, both parties have said we should declare victory and leave. Is this where we should be at this particular point in time? Is the Iraq uh, government capable of governing itself at this point? Well, I think at some point they've got to step up and govern themselves. Uh, the question is whether or not we're going to have a continued presence there right. that will help make that easier or whether we're going to basically leave and leave it to its own devices. And I think, again, whether we're looking at Libya, whether we're looking at Tunisia, whether we're looking at Egypt, the track record in the Middle East of the Muslim Brotherhood and the extremists taking over where the U.S. doesn't exert a strong presence is not a good one for our side. And I, I hesitate to think that we're going to see Iraq, perhaps Afghanistan, go into that kind of a dire tailspin as soon as we depart. The president made a commitment when he was running for office last time that we would get out of Iraq mm -hmm. and that we'd have a strategy for trying to end the war in Afghanistan. He's following through with that. The Afghan government still is, is, is not in a position where we can let them on their own, but the Iraqi government has become more solidified and more organized, and I think it is time to pull back. 
Back here in Tennessee, we saw the setup piece on about a thousand state employees who makes a little money. They qualify for food stamps. We can talk about raises and whether you know everybody's hurting at this point, but isn't it uh, a legitimate concern that people working for the state full time don't make enough money to feed their families? Well, I think it's a concern, but I think you also want to be looking at the benefits and, and the other things that they're being offered. When you look at a lot of Americans who are working in the private sector who have lost their jobs, just last week another 403,000 Americans lost their jobs in this economy. And while we ought to be looking at what we're compensating folks in the in the state government, they also have the opportunity to leave if the benefits, if mm -hmm. the salaries, and those things things aren't what they're wanting. And for the most part, many of those folks on state government's payrolls are having better benefits than those in the private sector who are both working and who've lost their jobs. Well, I've had a job in the, in the state government, and I can tell you right now that the salaries and benefits do not match what, what you can in terms of skill sets with what you can find in the private sector. I'm glad the governor has finally recognized that these are the people that make his state government run. He needs to do what he can to take care of them, and it is time to look at, to, to look at salaries, look at benefits, and, and figure out what the problem is. We uh, had earlier this week uh, Congressman Cooper and Congressman Blackburn come together to try to clarify the Lacey Act, which is the law behind the raid on Gibson guitars, whether they're using illegal wood, whether they knew they were using illegal wood, what the clarification will do. Any artist out there, anybody who owns one of these guitars, they're not going to be prosecuted. Their guitar is not going to be taken away from them. There's going to be a database of where the wood is located. It doesn't really address the issue. The investigation continues into Gibson. Does more need to be done? Well, and it doesn't address the bigger issue here, that you're having Gibson guitar as a target for the federal government under the Obama administration when they're a non-union shop and they're making donations to Republican candidates, while other companies who took wood off the exact same pallet, apparently, are not being investigated are not being raided. It is the application of the law. It is the unfair and uneven application of the law that's a really the issue, not just the law itself. I think uh, Jim Cooper had it right, though. You don't want the, the federal, you don't want the Congress trying to involve themselves in an ongoing federal investigation. We need to let this investigation run its course. Gibson's going to have plenty of opportunities to make their case as this proceeds forward, and let's just let that, let that happen. I think, though, that when you're seeing a selective enforcement of the law, Congress ought to be stepping in, whether you're looking at Solyndra scandals, gun, you know, fast and furious gun scandals. The track record of this administration is not one that we ought to trust what they say. About a minute to go, a raucous GOP debate this time around. Everybody Everybody went after everybody. Uh, who, who won out of that one? I mean, Herman Cain was trying to defend 999, then eventually changed it. Uh, looked like Perry and Romney may go to fisticuffs there for yeah, a while. Yeah, the good thing is our debates here look so <laughs> <quite> <laughs> reasonable. Exactly. When you compare it to what's here, there are some bad stairs. <laughs> hey, it's getting intense. We're getting down to the prime time. Right. And uh, as Mike knows, we're getting into New Hampshire. We're getting into Iowa. The heat's on, and these guys are going to show the pressure. Ten I, seconds. I think Mitt Romney won it. Absolutely. Hands down. He, he kept his composure. Mike Cobb, Steve Gill, appreciate your time and your insight. Stay with us. This week continues in a moment.